Guys, welcome to a brand new video. My name's Simon Smith on my channel, SAS Golf, and today we're gonna to talk about the Dave Peltz putting test. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you know I did the short game side of it, including bunker shots, wedge play, and uh, a bit of chipping, and how you can test yourself under pressure, a bit of structured practice that can definitely improve your short game. If you're one of those people that do really well on the practice screen, but can't take it to the golf course, then I highly suggest you go and check that video out. But today we're all about the putting. Now, I did a nice little putting video on Instagram that did slightly well. But that being said, that's obviously a bit of fun and that's obviously not the kind of scenario you want to be in. Um, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how you can improve your putting with a bit of pressure and a structured practice behind it, guaranteed to help your putting. It's not gonna talk about the technique. Technique's something that you're gonna have to work with your coach or if you're quite familiar with how you should be putting, um, that's something you have to work on yourself. But how to practice it efficiently and get the most out of your time structuring it and then recording your results that's key so you can show yourself the progression that you're making with your putting so what we're going to do i've just finished work it's seven o'clock in the evening it's perfect because the golf course is dead which means i can come out here and do a bit of putting practice out on the course because a lot of these drills do need a variety of different breaks lengths um, and you'll see that throughout the video so enough talking let's get into it Okay, so before we get into obviously the actual dynamics of it, I'm just going to show you how you can download this Excel spreadsheet from the internet that gives you an interactive guide of how you can enter your scores and give yourself a rough handicap of the, your, um, your putting and where it is at that point. So you can see after you've done these drills, which I'm going to show you in a minute, you can enter the points that you got for each test. It's going to tell you how well you did for each of those games. And you can look at weaknesses and see where your strengths are and what you can work on. And then it's going to give you a total handicap. So I just put in a load of random numbers there to give you some rough idea of what you need to do. Okay, so in each of these tests, you can see I've given you the diagram in the top right there, basically explaining you um, uh, where the scoring zone is, how you can earn points in each of these tests. So obviously three foot putts um, and the six foot putts are going to be very simple. If it goes in the hole, then you get a point. If it doesn't go in the hole, you don't get a point. Now, the thing I found with this test, I was definitely stressed. I've done this test many a times over the years. However, now, obviously, I'm trying to take it a lot more seriously. So whereas these tests would have taken me probably about, I don't know, half an hour to 40 minutes to complete all of them, it's now taking me about an hour and a half. And that's mainly because I'm now taking my time over each of the putts. I'm making sure that I line them up, make sure that I'm going through my pre-shot routine. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't line your ball up, you're doing it wrong. Some people don't line their ball up. Some people just walk up to the putt and hit it. But what I do stress is that do whatever you would do in a normal tournament. Don't just change it. Don't think, oh, I've got a spare 20 minutes, I'm going to do the test. Make sure you've got time. Because otherwise, you're just practicing that something that you're not going to use out of the golf course. Um, and for me, making sure that I'm practicing under that kind of tournament scenario, that pressured scenario, is really important. Um, otherwise, I'm not using my time efficiently, especially with this test. So as you can see, each shot, I'm lining the ball up. I'm then walking away from it, making sure I go through my pre-shot routine, thinking about where I want to hit this, to the left or to the right, depending on the break, and then how hard as well. So um, there you go. So I mean, pretty even on both the first round. I've got eight points on the first, which is probably a bit low, um, and then eight points on the sixth, which is probably pretty decent from six foot parts. Anyway, so going into the makeable parts. Now these are obviously a bit further out, and you can see in the diagram now you've got a semicircle to work uh, work for. So no putt can be left short, but at the same time you've got to be giving yourself that gimme range on the way back. Otherwise, you're just it's just averages. Even the pros they're gonna miss five footers, six footers coming back no matter how good you are. So you've got to be making sure, yes, you want to get past the hole, but at the same time giving yourself that no stress option of just tapping it back in. So that one that I've left short, even though it's four inches from the hole, which in a tournament from like 15, 18 foot, something like that, is not a disaster. But if you think in terms of averages over so many tournaments of the year, actually a few of those could be dropping and you could be thinking actually I'm going to start making a few more birdies or a few more par saves. Um, f for me, my putting definitely feeling quite good at the moment, back and through um, and again I think going through my pre-shot routine, going through the same thing over and over again definitely helps. The longer the putts however, especially as I went through the longer lag putts in this um, 
um, like experience, I should say, my technique got worse and worse. Um, that's something I'm going to have to work on. I felt all of a sudden I'm now having to hit it. Even my wrist starting got involved, which obviously you don't want. I'm not used to hitting 80 foot putts, um, but again, this test is just giving you all outcomes. So then we're on to in between putts. Now you can see in the diagram, all of a sudden you've got rid of the semicircle. You're not going to get punished if you do leave this slightly short of the hole. However, you still want to, for me, you still want to get it past the hole. Some of these eventually are going to go in. Um, so if you can lean towards the ball going past the hole, at least you're still giving it a bit of a chance. The only thing I would say with these as well, maybe move the T peg so you've got one at 40 foot. No, I should say 30 foot, 35 foot, and 25 foot maybe move these around the green so actually you're giving yourself some different kind of putts because um, you can see all of a sudden I've got an idea of the break it was easier for me these aren't necessarily easy putts by any stretch of the imagination but it was easier for me so maybe it's something that I might um, try and to mix up a bit make the test a bit more difficult for me but again I felt quite confident with these ones I didn't feel like I had to really hit them massively hard um, it was more of the lag putts in the next one that I definitely felt like I had to really hit um, but I mean it's a good test and if you do have some technical issues with your putting you all of a sudden you're going to start seeing it around this point um, because you'll see some leave yourself massively short and massively long from the hole so the last one in terms of obviously the long putts is the lag putts now these ones are um, quite difficult I mean I can understand not everyone's going to have an 80 foot green to work with obviously I'm out on the golf course it is very quiet and we've only got a couple of greens where the holes were cut that I can actually practice these long putts from um, but try and make it make make the test around you I'm not being funny if you're never going to have an 80 foot putt or a 60 foot putt then there's not really much point in practicing them I will have tournaments where I will have these putts, so for me it is important that I do get a chance to practice them. But you can see all of a sudden the dispersion of my putts now are pretty much all over the place. And it's something that I need to work on. I can imagine my stats this year, I have had a couple of three putts here and there, if not a couple around, and these are probably the ones that are letting me down. So making sure that even if I am hitting the greens, I've got to be giving myself that three foot, four foot range that I can then be making a good amount of two putts from as well. So the idea, especially from these lag putts, you're not looking to necessarily hold it, but you're more or less trying to look to give yourself that no stress option, give yourself that gimme option, um, and obviously try and keep yourself calm out on the golf course, because if you're leaving yourself a lot of work to do from this range, then all of a sudden it's going to be a very long round for you, especially from the 30, 25 foot range, but you're going to have quite a few putts from. If you're not confident getting them within the hole or close to the hole, it's going to be a very long round. Okay, so the last one is big breaking putts. And again, you might not have a practice green that has a massive amount of break. It does suggest that you're looking at about three foot or two foot more of break. This one had quite a lot of break for me. Now it's interesting, I found right to left putts, I found a lot easier to control, well, as he says he puts one massively past, but overall right to left putts I found a lot easier than left to right putts, um, I think that's because naturally I've always tended to come across the ball with my chipping and my putting, so as soon as the ball's below my feet um, I think that's only exaggerated it, even though my technique has got better over the years, so right to left putts obviously I was um, a lot more confident with, so as you can see here, even though I'm hitting okay-ish putts I should say in terms of they're near the hole because they're not behind the hole then I'm getting no points for them so they're both those two putts there I'm not getting any points for um, and actually if my memory serves me right I don't think I've got any points for the whole of the left to right putts so again for me this is why the test is good for the next week or so what am I going to practice on well I'm probably going to practice my lag putts and I'm probably going to practice my left to right breaking putts um, because they're the things that probably let me down so guys there you have it that is the Dave Peltz putting test Guys, let me know how you get on with this test. Um, let me know how you did, if you beat me, if you didn't beat me, what you could improve on, what you found easy, what you found weak. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up. As always, please subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.